Hey, and good evening, everybody. <laughs> I got I got it to work. Yes, sorry, being very, very, very slightly late. Um, quite a lot of things to do right before the end of everything. Um, and the usual technical problems, so apologies for that. But I am getting there. I'm getting better at this streaming lot. And my PC is mostly behaving itself, which is good. Which, um, actually, for this evening is going to be quite important because um, I'm running 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit stuff. <laughs> in order to make this work and not all of it has been rehearsed I've done my best um, so fingers crossed right fingers crossed it all holds together but uh, there we go so we are we are live um, yes so this is my Thursday stream uh, which is obviously dedicated to gaming so um, I'm not I must admit I am not a huge huge gamer myself but um, I am a huge fan of Elite and Elite Dangerous and generally space games in general right so that is that's why I spend a lot of my time doing um, for those of you I know uh, there's a lot of you on the stream tonight who are possibly new because I did splat out a few Facebook and Twitter messages earlier on saying I was doing some stuff about the background of Elite in preparation for my law tour which is uh, kind of up and coming um, and um, um, so if you if you don't know if you haven't been to the stream before welcome thank you very much for turning up I should be looking at the camera I keep forgetting to do that because <laughs> it's in a different place um, and um, yes yeah, so welcome to the stream if you haven't been here before thank you very much for coming it's about two hours long um, usually fairly tight on time so um, uh, it'll be about two hours I'll keep it trying keep trying keep it punchy um, and uh, my name is Drew Drew Wager. Some of you may know me. Um, quite a lot of you will know me, actually. But for those of you who don't, um, I was a player of the original Elite back in 1984. Um, I wrote some of the official novels for Elite Dangerous, so Elite uh, Reclamation and Premonition, which you may have come across. Um, and I was involved in some of the uh, lore and some of the in-game events that happened in the early part of Elite Dangerous now, I think it is actually, um, uh, between 2014 and 2017. So, um, yeah, so that is who I am. And what I'm going to be doing tonight is playing some of the um, earlier versions of Elite, right? So we're going to go back in time and we're going to go and have a bit of fun playing the original stuff. So, um let me just start that running. I'm just going to switch over to here. Um, and we can get rid of Facebook. We definitely don't need that. Uh, and we'll start firing up in a moment. So, um, <laughs> right, so lots of people in the chat. So DJ Truthsayer, oh, I, haven't heard, I haven't heard from you in chat for a long, long time. So that's awesome. Good to see you uh, come along there, fella. Uh, Commander Woland, Commander Terra Firma, Magnificent Mako, Thurstone78, Dirk D74, Tamara Hark. Uh, Panoramic 70, all familiar names. Good to see you. Bitstorm, yay! So that's good. Don't think I've become more egocentric at all. No, no, never. <laughs> that's the problem with this camera, right? <laughs> it's making me a bit, making me a bit paranoid. Um, Scolio's there as well. Drunken Doc waves. Kelly Bag. Oh, Kelly Bagler, yes. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I do need to get a Lords of Midnight hat. I found a badge. Look, I found a badge. I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd wear that. So, um, uh, and Skyrim is 27. So you peeps. So anyway, welcome everybody. Now let's let's get on with it because we've got a lot of games to get through tonight. I'm really going to have to whistle to all this because it's got two hours. I'm minus seven minutes already because I've been waffling. Which for those of you who are used uh, used to my screen, uh, apologies because I do occasionally get sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, hey, uh, I can only make some apologies for that. So let's let's get going. Now, the first version of Elite is, of course, the original Elite. <laughs> and here it is in all its glory. Um, this is I mean, I haven't got a BBC now. Um, um, a, a point on this, right? OK. Um, the original Elite was written by David Braben and Ian Bell, as we all know. Uh, David Braben still the CEO of Frontier Developments even today, so he's got lineage all the way uh, from from you know from way back here to the thing. Now, it was written for the BBC Model B, eight bit home computer. Um, now, for those of you who don't know what this is, it's a, it's a computer that was built in about 1982. Um, and it, as you can see, featured 32K, that's 32K of RAM, <laughs> which is 32,000 bytes. And that's all it's got, right? Um, so not a great deal of space to write a game in. Um, and uh, it was written for the BBC. And it was eventually ported to lots of other computers, including the Commodore 64, the ZX Spectrum, and Amstrad's, and, and basically, virtually every 8-bit computer pretty much ended up with a version of Elite, uh, which, which is cool. 
but this is the daddy okay this is the original this is the original game so i'm just going to upload it on this emulator um and this is actually this one is actually from the frontier store um, i don't know if it's still available but certainly a few years ago when i bought elite dangerous one of the freebies that you got with that game was this emulator and a copy of elite um set for it so uh um it may still be there i'm not sure but uh, this is the one i got from frontier so this is kind of the official frontier version of the original bbc game which is which is quite cool right um so here we go with all sound effects <laughs> it's amazing let me move that over here and i can make it a bit bigger actually um this this user interface is a bit a bit strange but there we go there we go that looks about right doesn't it Right, so here we. This is this is it. This this is it. This is where Elite starts. Okay, this is this is the first version of Elite. This is the first time anybody ever saw the Cobra Mark III, which hopefully those of you who play Elite Dangerous will recognise that. Go, hang on a minute. That's that's vaguely familiar. That shape. Uh, it is. That is the Cobra Mark III. Now you can see the version that's in Elite Dangerous. Um, hails from this. This is what they based it up. Based it off. Okay, uh, and this is the original Elite game. Um, now, a pointed question. For those of you who were rich back in 1984, you would have had a BBC, right? But the BBC computer was about 400 quid um, to buy in 1984, which is this, today is about two grand worth, if, you know, if you take about inflation out of the way. So £2,000. Um, I never had a BBC because my parents couldn't afford one. <laughs> so I ended up with the ZX Spectrum, which was the kind of cheap computer of the time. Um, and I had to wait a couple of years before Elite um, came out on it. Now, the Spectrum was only about £125, which was um, um, well, probably still, I mean, not cheap, right? Still three, £400 in today's money. Um, but, you know, a lot more accessible to us, you know, um, uh, us poorer folks. So I, I had great envy on <laughs> the BBC for at least the, at least 18 months while we waited for the Spectrum version of this to come out. But this this is the original Cobra, right? Uh, the original Elite game that we're going to be having a quick look at this evening. Now, so this is what you get presented with. Load new commander, yes or no? Uh, Aconsoft 1984. So obviously uh, no, because I haven't got a save game. We're going to start from scratch. Click the mouse pointer in there. Right. And then we get... The next ship. Now, you may recognize this one. Who recognizes the crate? OK, so this is the crate in Elite. Um, amazing vector graphics. <laughs> now, um, you may be thinking the emulator looks a little bit flickery, but um, apparently I'm told that this is how it was back in the day. I don't actually remember this, but this is uh, this is how it was. Um, and we got to press space or fire um, now. This version of Elite did have joystick support, which is quite cool. I haven't got my joystick working with it, unfortunately, but there we go. And there we go. We are Commander Jameson. OK, now you may be wondering, where did Commander Jameson come from? Well, this is him. OK, now in Elite Dangerous, uh, if you look up on the wiki pages, you can go and visit the crash site of Commander Jameson. Now, that's not this Commander Jameson, and we'll get to that, but it's part of the family of Commander Jameson, who starts here. Now, this game never had the date specified in it, um, but um, we've worked out, and the official law states that this game uh, was was based in law around the year thirty one twenty five. Okay, thirty one twenty five is where we're at in the original Elite, um, and that's right. Yeah, Bitstorm, you're absolutely right. Um, the CRTs had more persistence, so you could get away with the way that they did the graphics because <laughs> the refresh rate of the screen wasn't enough. For you to notice the flicker, uh, whereas of course now you run it on it, you run it on um, LCD displays as we do today, LEDs and stuff. Uh, you can see it. Uh, and guess where we are, right? So we are at we are we are in the lave system. Da da da. That's where Elite starts in the law. Um, lave system. Hyperspace system is set to lave. Condition we're docked. We have seven light years of fuel, 100 credits. We are clean. We are harmless. And our Cobra Mark III is full of equipment, including well, actually no, just a front pulse laser okay um, so there you go boom uh, that that is what we have now I've got to be a little bit careful because I've got to remember the keys here <laughs> uh, now the um, BBC key mapping is a little bit weird so you may have to fill with me whether I try and find things right so we can look up where we are we can look up we have our short-range chart okay 
So we have, um, oh yeah, we do, that's right, you're quite right, Mech Shadow Beast, we have three missiles on board. Now you may, this HUD down here, okay, now it, uh, you yeah, it's 8-bit, it's primitive, it's old, it's like it's 40 years old, right? Um, but you still have a 3D scanner, you still have a compass, um, these, we'll explain these when we're out flying a little bit, but these will give you quite useful information about what's going on in your ship, and it's still the basic elements of the HUD are still there in Elite Dangerous, right? Um, and so is this star map. Now it's in 2D in, um, in, in, in Elite, um, obviously. Um, just trying to find the long range version. There we go. So there's the galactic chart, right? <laughs> uh, which doesn't give you a great deal. So we'll zoom in and that gives us, there we go. That is the short range chart. Now we're centered on Lave. We can see Dizo, we can see Ridquat, uh, we can see Leasty, we can see Aurev, we can see Zayance, and we can see T and Isla. Okay, now all of those systems exist in today's Elite Dangerous. So if you go and look up any of those systems on that short range chart in Elite Dangerous, you will find them there and you will find them in exactly the same geographic, um, geometric um, position um, as they exist in the original game, which I think is a really cool touch, right? It's a really, really cool way to uh, celebrate the fact that they've taken the lore out of the original games and brought it into the new ones. Um, and we can, uh, if I use the incredible, um, we can lock onto a system, Leasty in this case, we can look up information about it um, we can see it's 3.6 years away. It's a poor industrial. Um, it has human colonials. And here's another thing. The planet Leasty is reasonably fabled, fabled for zero-G cricket and Leastian evil juice. Okay, so if any of you have been to Leasty in Elite Dangerous, you will notice that you can go and pick up from the market a rare good called Leastian evil juice. This is where it comes from. It's from the original game. Okay, so this is, this is, you know, this is why I'm quite excited about doing this law tour later on, because not all of you will know, not all of you will necessarily appreciate how much of this original game is, is, is connected, right? It's all quite exciting stuff. <laughs> well, I think it's quite exciting stuff anyway. Um, and it's important, right? Because if you're going to navigate around Elite Dangerous, there's stuff you need to know about what happened before. And this is where it all starts, right? Back in 1984 with this game. Uh, so what does it look like? Okay, what does it what does it look like? Well, um, <laughs> primitive <laughs> by today's standards, um, but let's 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 do this. Okay, the other thing you could do this before we go actually um, here, uh, which button is it? There we go. We can buy stuff. We can equip our ship. So all the essence of Elite Dangerous is kind of here. Okay, so we can we can improve our ship. Uh, we can add a missile. We can we can improve the size of the cargo bay. Uh, we can do we can add, add an anti-missile system. We can add extra lasers. We can add a fuel scoop. Okay, all that stuff, all been done back in 1984. Um, uh, Matt King has to. Is your law going to cover the stuff that still seems to be canon in the old Taurus beacons? I'm not going to concentrate too much on Taurus beacons unless it reinforces them because you can go and do the Taurus beacons yourself, right? Um, I want to give you the stuff that's not so easily accessible. Um, so yes, we, we'll probably do the old Taurus beacon, but that's not the emphasis of the law tour, right? Um, uh, has it because I feel like parts of Elite and FFE are still sort of canon to exist. Ah, well, that's what we're going to try and figure out, right? We're going to try and figure out what is and what isn't because that's that's all part of the law, right? We got to we got to figure things out. So uh, I don't need to buy any fuel. Um, let's go back out of there. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and launch from the space station. Nope, that's buying food. Now, the BBC had an F0 button, which obviously modern P PCs don't have. So F0 is actually mapped, I think, to F10. No, it's not. In that case, I need to find the launch button. Which one is it? It's going to be escape. No. That's cell. There we go. It's F11. F11 is right. we just got to wait for the disk simulation. And there we go. We'll <laughs> that was us. That was us leaving the space station, right? Um, Right, so just a word on the HUD. Okay, I'm just going to bring us to a halt. Um, so here, this is this is our speed. Um, this these ones here are are roll left, roll right, and dive climb indicators, which you'll see. I can roll the ship around its central axis, and I can roll it back again. And I've also got up and down controls. Okay, so that's how I maneuver. There is no yaw in the original Elite at all. Okay, the spinning background there is. Is elite on the BBC's attempt to make the planet look 3D. 
I'm not sure if it really ever worked. Mostly on all the other conversions of the 8-bit elites, they didn't bother with this. Um, I think David Braben and Ian Bell were just sort of showing off a little bit that they could do transformations in 3D. Um, so it's, I'm not quite sure what it's trying to show. Is it, is it trying to show the planet rotating or is it just trying to show that it's sort of scanning a 3D object? I'm not quite sure, but anyway, that's, that's what it does. Um, so let's, let's move forward a little bit. And we have space dust flying past the ship as, as, as you would expect. And you can see the scanner there just beginning to register that there's something behind us, which of course is the space station we just left, right? Um, now we do have something that we don't have on Elite Dangerous here. Um, we can look left, right, and behind. <laughs> How useful is that? And there's the Coriolis space station that we just left, right, turning around in space. Um, and then we've got the front bridge. So let's just turn around and look at it. Um, now you'll notice there the frame rate improves when there's nothing on the screen, <laughs> which just shows you how limited these 8-bit eight, eight um, computers were. Um, and I've just got to... Now, without your actually docking with these space stations, it's actually probably the hardest part of the game, right? Um, there's no boost, fortunately, but you do have to control your speed. Uh, and as you can see, it is it is exactly the same as a you know a modern Coriolis station, just you know quite a lot more primitive in the graphics department. Okay, um, we can um, wait until it goes past. There we go. Look at that. I mean, that's just insane, isn't it? <laughs> um, now we will um, almost certainly die doing what I'm about to do next, but it. It'll show you what happens, okay? You sometimes, yeah, you sometimes get an unexpected python pop out of the front of the ship, which will kill you. <laughs> uh, so we're going to try uh, to hyperspace to the Ridquat system, which is certain death, because um, in Elite, uh, in the original Elite, every ship had a, every ship, every planet had a rating, right? From Anarchy, which is the worst, all the way up to um, I think corporate state or democracy was the safest one. I'm just trying to remember. Probably corporate state, actually. Uh, in a corporate state, you'd never get attacked at all. In an anarchy, everyone just sets upon you. It's just swarming with pirates, right? Um, we only have a pulse laser, so we are not going to survive. <laughs> but it will show you what the game was like, right? So to engage, let's just turn around. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Turn around. There, there's a planet there. Notice we do have a working compass. It's pretty primitive as you can see but it does work in the same way that Elite Dangerous as Compass works um, and you can just about see there on the screen the little uh, well I used to call them periscopes I don't know what the official name for them is um, and there's the space station merrily spinning around and there's a ship look there's a ship just launched there I don't know what it is it's just about four dots but you know it's, it is there right there we go Daddy Hoggy says corporate state was the safest um, right so we locked onto Ridquat we're going to hyperspace there we go, we have a countdown, and there it goes. It's working out. It's very high tech, this. Oh, it, that I think is a Cobra. Anyway, there we go. We've hyperspaced, and I think we crashed the game. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Uh, that says not found. What happened there? This is this worked earlier on this e this, this evening. Uh, I tell you what, I don't think I may have done. Uh, I think we may need to run this as the BBC Master. Um, let me just try that again. You can tell it's the, okay. This is this is a proper what we call in the UK Blue Peter. Uh, bad string. Well, that doesn't work. Um, come on. Doesn't like that. Right, I'm sure I changed it to one of these. Maybe it was a bottle model B plus. Let's try that one. Yeah, it's working. Don't you just love old technology? I like the way this emulator emulates the sound of the floppy disks. Um, <laughs> uh, right, actually, no, I don't want to do that. No, 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 five. Space launch F11. Wait, that. Can you do a misjump? Uh, yes, well, um, 
I know how to do it on the Spectrum version. Does anybody know how to do... Um, does anyone know how to do a misjump on the BBC version? Because on the Spectrum version, you pulled up or did a climb before entering hyperspace. But I'm not sure how you do it. Um, I'm not sure how you do it on the BBC version. All right, let's go to let's go to Ridquag in. <laughs> right, we're there. Forward view, hyperspace. Right, uh, for those of you asking about mass lock, no, hyperspace wasn't mass locked in the original link, but the um, the ability to do fast transit towards the planet was. Right, hey, it worked. So we're in business. Right, we're now in the Ridquat system. You know, where angels fear to tread. Right, we, and we can't get back out again because um, oh, we've already got a ship approaching. Right, there we go. And that's attacking us. Oh, there we go. Right, full speed. What have we got here? Let's see if I can take down one of these bad boys. Oh, it's a cobra deciding to attack us. Come on, die! Yes! <laughs> right, where's the other one? Oh, I've got some money. See that? There it is. Get the periscope. Right, what have we got here? Whoa. This is where a joystick probably would be handy. I don't even know what ship it is. There's no way to identify the ship. You have to do it visually, which is why the original game came with a, uh, a ship identification chart. Um, because there's, the computer didn't tell you what it was. Uh, it's taking a long time to get. Oh, that's just a piece of debris, I think. Where is it? I'm not sure what that is, actually. No, it's not. Whatever it is, it's trying to run away, <laughs> which is interesting. I don't know what ship it is. Let's see if we can blast it. Oh, the other one's. The other one's shooting at me from behind, which is. They're very arcadey sound effects, aren't they? Oh, there's that one then. Right. I've got to deal. And you can see my rear shields are being <laughs> shot to pieces even as I try and turn around. That was a bit vicious. But it's supposed to be vicious. Oh, I'm going to get killed before I even. Oh, there's the Cobra. Alright, can I get one? I've got two ships. Can I get one more before you die? <laughs> But the combat, actually, I mean, I know it's primitive, right? But it's it's still actually quite good fun. Because you're fighting, because you haven't got any yaw. You're fighting and rolling all the time, trying to get the ship into <laughs> to visual range. And the scanner becomes a bit useless at point-blank range. I'm about to die. Ah, there we go. <laughs> But well, that was a stupid move, right? You don't go to Ridquat in a ship with just a pulse laser. It's, 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 it's insane, right? <laughs> so um, anyway, so that's that's t <laughs> that was an explanation of why you don't go to Ridquat, right? Okay. Now that's that was one cool thing about the original Elite, right? There were places that you could not go um, at the beginning of the game, okay? Because you would just die you know, like that. Ridquat, there was not a system you could get through until you had a half decent ship. Did I actually blow myself up? <laughs> I use the, yeah, that's one little thing that's a problem, is it? If you use all your energy banks up, the, the computer detects the condition for death is energy banks are zero, so you can kill yourself just by constantly firing the laser, which is a small bug in the original Elite, which was carried forward into all the others. Um, so if you keep shooting, it does kill you. But there we go. Um. <laughs> so the original Elite was actually quite dangerous, right? You can't go into the Ridquat system and survive. Um, let's just let's just do something a little bit safer this time. So that was that was a bit of combat, okay? A bit of PVE uh, in the original game. Let's go to Leasty, which is a is just a safe place, right? Um, instead, and then we must move on because we've got lots of other games to play, right? Uh, so hyperspace. Off we go to Leasty, and I can show you. Um, some of the other stuff. Now, at some point, I'd like to go into some of the other 8-bit versions of Elite in much more detail because there are some interesting differences between this version, the Spectrum version, the C64 version, and so on and so forth, but I haven't got all the emulators running yet. Now, when you go to Leasty, the planet looks a bit different. Instead of a, a crosshatch, it's got a sort of Death Starry 
um, effect to it. I have no idea what they were trying to do with this, really. Um, we have all to ask David Braben what, what they were thinking. Is it just like, it, it, I don't know if it's like a sort of scannery effect that it's trying to show you or just to provide a bit more variety. Now, what you can see is we're now at full throttle, right? And the planet is miles away. OK, and in Elite, there was a there, there were, isn't much in the way of planets, right? You've got a star, you've got a um, a planet and that's it. OK, <laughs> there's nothing else in Elite at all other than the star and a planet. Um, and um, the idea is you've got to get to the space. There's one space station in each system and it goes round. Well, it doesn't go round, but it supposedly is in orbit around the planet ahead. But in order to get to that planet, um, even at full throttle, it'll take us like half an hour. So there is a, um, what on the Spectrum version was called the Taurus drive, and on this version is called the Jump Drive. If I press J, we, <laughs> we literally jump. <laughs> the Spectrum version had a cool animation, but the BBC version doesn't have one. Um, and then we get into a certain range, and they the, the, hear that beep. That was mass lock, okay? We are now mass locked. I can't, I can't do anything. And then there's a ship going past, which is a... Boa, I think. Boa or Anaconda, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. In, impact, I mean, it's definitely rotating fast, right? <laughs> so that was a Boa class cruiser that just went past. Um, and then we've got to wait. We can't, we can't jump. That's what that noise means. Uh, until the ship is off the edge of the scanner, which is great gameplay. <laughs> um, even at full throttle, right? Um, which I think encouraged you to take up a life of piracy, right? Because it was quite often quicker to kill the other ship <laughs> so you could get to the planet closer. Um, and when you've got a fuel scoop, if you shoot the other ship, and that is what's also annoying in I, right? Okay, we've now got two other ships uh, appeared. So you can sometimes get... To, oh, that's pirates. Yeah. Well, I, better, I better deal with them then. Jeez, you've got four of them. Okay, well, we might not make this either. Oh, it's a viper. I think that was a viper. So you have to be quite good at this game in order to... <sighs> Stop shooting at me! Right, I'm going to die again. I'm being a bit remorseless. Doesn't take you long to be killed, as you can see. I was going to show you docking at the space station, but I can't now. I'm out of time. <laughs> so you can see it was it was pretty brutal, right? Okay, <laughs> it was really brutal. I don't remember it being that bad as a kid, but it's, it is. It's really quite hard to play now. I'm going to try the missile yet. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to Leasty. He said it would be safe. We're supposed to be safe, right? <laughs> it clearly wasn't. Four pirates jumped. They obviously knew I was coming, right? So um, I just you know there we go. Anyway, that's the original Elite. Okay, that's the original Elite. Now, there were, there were multiple versions of that original Elite. Now, I'm going to um, very quickly just go on from here and show you um, later versions, because Elite was ported, right? It was one of the games that really um, got moved around a lot to lots of other different platforms. And it did, it, it did end up on the uh, original PC. Um, and this version here, um, called The New Kind, is a very... It's it's rather controversial version of Elite, right? <laughs> but this is what it ultimately looked like when it arrived on on the PC. Slightly dodgy 16-bit music, notwithstanding. This one was a very faithful reproduction, right? Okay, so by this point we've got uh, graphics and we've got filled-in polygons and all sorts of things. And this one was actually shut down. Um, because um, people, uh, not, not CJ Pinder, the chap who did this, because he, he did a very good job of it. Uh, he did a fantastic job. But people got hold of this and were trying to flog it, okay, and get it for money. So uh, David Bell had, uh, David Bell, David, <laughs> oops. <laughs> uh, David Rabin shut it down forcefully um, and uh, took it off the market. Now, I managed to grab a copy before it was wiped off the internet, okay. You'll find it pretty hard to find today, but... Um, it's a piece of history as far as I'm concerned, that's why I've got it. Um, and it plays the Blue Danube. How cool is that? <laughs> that's a missile. 
for reasons. Um, and it allows us to, you know, play Elite, the original Elite, very, very, very close to the original version, but on mod on a modern computer, right? Which is what, exactly the same UI. Um, now, nothing's really been changed here. It's just made nicer to work. Even the keys are the same. Um, there we go. Let's go to do so again. Um, yeah, it maps to the, I think it maps pretty much to the, you know, and we've got funky graphics there. Uh, well, funky-ish graphics. See, because I'm so old, this still looks quite modern to me. <laughs> I think this looks really good. Um, and, uh, you know, we can still do the same things we did, but everything is just that little bit more friendly to modern eyes, right? But it's exactly the same game underneath, okay? Which is which is nice, and we can hyperspace the least D. It'll do exactly what the BBC version did. Um, slightly nicer sound effects, and there we go. Um, I can use the compass. You can see the compass, it's just a lot easier to read now, right? And it's got slightly shaded graphics to make things fun. And there we go. When we jump towards the planet, we now get a sort of jumping effect, which you can see is why, um, you know, we can see where the inspiration for the frame shift drive comes from, right? Because it was in the original Elite. The style of gameplay is, is there. Um, and then hopefully as we get into orbit, we're mass locked near the planet. We haven't picked up the space station yet. Um, and so on and so forth. So, but it's the same, it's the same game, same game. Okay, so this is all happening in the year 3125. Um, all I've got to do now is figure out how to get out of the game. <laughs> but anyway, so um, so that's the original Elite, okay? Space Dust or Space Dandruff, I think it's sometimes called. Um, um, and um, then we move, then we move on, right? Now, the original Elite came out in 84. The 8-bit versions run for about three years. They get converted to the 16-bit versions of the time. So things like the Atari ST, the Commodore Amiga, and the early PCs get them as well. Um, and the screen is square like that because that's what the monitors, that's what the monitors look like. You know, these widescreen monitors that we have today, not they're, they're not so common, right? Um, they, you know, they didn't exist back then. Um, um, I suspect that, you know, the, the, the square screen is, but a lot of the monitors were that shape, okay, our four by three monitors that we had. Um, and that's what we had. Now, um, then we get into the next kind of next generation, really, okay, so the 16 bit machines are out, and the next official version of Elite comes out in 1993. Um, I'm just going to have to switch to a slightly different mode here. Apologies, my green screen is not green screening very well tonight, so apologies for that. Obviously, you can be a blur through that, but I haven't got time to fix it. Um, so now, in order to get this to work, I've got these games. Again, back in the day, back in the day, um, there was a website called eliteclub.co.uk that was actually built by Frontier officially, where you could download the shareware versions of Frontier and Frontier Elite Encounters, the original binaries for the game, okay? Um, and so this is this is nine years onwards. Now, in order to get this to work, I'm going to have to run because uh, these are 16-bit games. They will not work on um, they, will, they will not work on modern 64-bit operating systems at all. Okay, it's just, it's impossible. So you have to go back. You have to emulate a PC from the 90s in order to get these games to work, which is what this is. This is DOSBox. Okay. Um, now, anybody who's ever lived in this generation of computers. Uh, we'll we'll understand some of the pain I've taken to get this to work, okay? But there we go. Um, right now, we've got to tell the computer that there's a place on my drive that I want to mount as the C drive on this virtual computer, which we now have. And then I've got to go to it. Um, but I've got to type it in a weird way because the original DOS couldn't cope with anything more than eight characters for a folder name. Um, oh, I'm still. There we go. Um, so here we go at the first Frontier game. Now I need to start that. That's Frontier. Right. So this is this is actually from, as you can see, Frontier Developments Limited, Saxon Farm Long Meadow. This is their original office, okay? <laughs> this is where they were long before they moved to the science park. In fact, probably long before the science um uh, Science Park was built, and EliteClub.co.uk has long since gone. Uh, Frontier.co.uk is still a website, obviously, but now Frontier Development, of course, which is slightly different. Um, now, those of you who are fans of my books may notice something here that I used a drug in 
um, elite reclamation, elite premonition called hex edit, which allowed you to change your memories, right? And that little thing came from here. Uh, please note this game has been hex edited to remove <laughs> various things. I thought, I'm going to use that. That's that's the name of the drug in Elite Dangerous. That's now become law, actually. Um, but that's where it came from, okay? Hex edited came from this, so it's still kind of elite right? Uh, and that's where I got it from. Uh, so let's start the game, and we will have some amazing... And we have to choose which sound card, okay? Um, so this one's configured for Adlib Sound Blaster. So, you know, getting your game to work actually was a challenge back in those days. And here it is. And with a bit of luck, we'll have a little bit of music in a minute, which is the amazing Frontier Elite 2 theme by a very talented um, musician called David Lowe. I'm just going to... The other th problem is this is emulating a, a low-spec PC, so I'm just going <laughs> to uprate the... <laughs> frame rate is busted. Oh, there we go. Here we are. Right. I'm just going to increase the clock speed of my emulated PC so the frame rate works. <laughs> there we go. Looks a bit better now. So this this is the Imperial Courier. We are not talking about the Imperial Courier tonight. That is a rant for another night. But you'll notice this is the Imperial Courier from Frontier Elite 2, um, which, is, which is somewhat different to the Imperial Courier that we have in Elite Dangerous. And I will leave it there. <laughs> I get triggered. <laughs> but you know we have you know this is this is this is nine years on right um and you may go in oh, the graphics look pretty rubbish but they are significantly better than the original elite plus we've got solid graphics as you can see they're, they're not shaded yet but that, that's still to come um but we do have um planetary landings right these ships can fly down to the surface there are cities on the surface there are clouds in the sky, um, there's stuff about, and you have a pretty close to one-to-one -one representation of the galaxy. It's not perfect, but it isn't bad. It isn't bad, right? And planetary landings on any planetary body. So if, it, if it's an airless moon, one thing. If it's um, not, yeah, if it's got an atmosphere, you can do that as well. Um, for some strange reason, space had gone blue by this point. <laughs> Um, I don't know why that was. Um, there's some explanation about trying to make it look deeper than black, but I don't really understand that. Um, but anyway, there we go. So, um, but you know, spinning space stations rather more complicated. So you can see again a lot of the elite dangerous um, inspiration comes from this. Uh, you could go into gas giants. You could fuel scoop from gas giants. Yes, um, but you couldn't land on them obviously because they're. Um, Nothing there to land on. Big ships. There were some big bulk carriers in the game. Um, even with the uprated um, CPU speed there, you can see the emulation struggling to match that. So there comes the Imperial Courier. I think dealing, dealing with a couple of eagles, I think those are. Um, so, and on we go. There we go. Um, that weird circly, sparkly thing is the hyperspace exit, which worked quite differently in this game than it did in Elite. Um, it probably is easier on the eyes, yeah. Anyway, so there we go. Boom, we deal with it. Uh, so that's, you know, a cool intro sequence, right? Quite cool. Uh, that ship was um, an end game, really, for the for the game. It was quite hard to get to the Imperial Crew because it was really, really expensive. One of the top ships in the game. And it had this lovely catamaran design with spinning nacelles. And, you know, it, it was good. Um, now, interesting enough here, this is a bit of lore as well. If you start in the lave system, you have to pay a fine in order to get to... The other systems, um, which I'm not going to go into now because I haven't got time, but we will explain in the law as to why that is important because it is, it's a big part of the law. Um, but we'll start for quickly from the recommended position, and here we are. Look at that. <laughs> um, Yes, yeah, there, were, there was lots of little bugs in this, actually. Yeah, you could do things like jettisoning rubbish um, and increase the size of your cargo hold due to a, a failed bit of maths calculation in the game and all sorts of stuff. There were plenty of ships that could shoot themselves because of bugs in the uh, the way it worked as well. So that, that was a bit weird. Uh, but yeah, look at, the, look at the sophistication. There is a planet up there that will move in real time 
you know, we've now got a clock, okay, that's ticking away. It is January the 1st, 3200 now. So this is um, 100 years before Elite Dangerous, okay? Um, and you can see the city. There's a like a hydroponic type dome over it. And you can go over there and have a look. Well, well I might try that. Um, the UI is simple, but we've still got the same elements, the, the, the GUI there. Um, but we have this new feature here, the time acceleration, okay? Everything in the in the second game and the third game happens in real time. It's a bit it's a bit weird, but you kind of get used to it. It's very realistic, um, in in a sort of way. So this is the second elite game. Um, now other things that you'll be interested in. Look at this. We have um, what we now know as the bubble. You may have heard me call the core world. And the reason I call them the core worlds is that's what they were called. Okay, core. These are the core worlds. So we can see this galaxy map. Okay, the graphics are low res, but check this out. I can navigate around what appears to be a pretty good representation of um, the galaxy, right? And I can even, you know, this is pretty sophisticated for this era of computing. I can actually rotate it around in 3D, um, zooming in and out and all sorts of stuff. So you can see why it was there. Sol, for example, I can click on Sol, I think. Uh, how does that work? I'm not quite sure I <laughs> select things anymore. Um, not sure. Can't remember. Um, the UI is, again, one of those things. I think, actually, yeah, you have to put, there you go. You have to put it in. And if I click on this information, look what I get. I get a system map, which you may think, hang on, I mean, I've seen that before somewhere. It's exactly the same as the Elite Dangerous one, just obviously lower res, right? Um, it's amazing. It's amazing, really. It was This was done in 1993. Um, and, you know, I can click on Earth. I can click on Jupiter. Uh, obviously, um, Eris and uh, all those other ones hadn't been discovered back in 1993. Um, so they're not here. But, you know, the three space stations that are still in orbit around the Earth in Elite Dangerous yeah, are still here, right? Okay, Abraham Lincoln, um, Mikhail Gorbachev, and the Queen Zhao are still there. So they've been faithful to that kind of stuff. And obviously a yellow DJ, G touch star, blah, 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 blah. And we can uh, zoom out on the, on the galactic map. So far, right? So familiar, okay? Yeah, so there we go. Um, now, if we go back here, we've also got one thing that took a long time to come to Elite Dangerous, external view, right? I can go and look at the outside of my spaceship. This is a camera on top of my ship looking back, okay? And I've got a natty spinning um, <laughs> low-tech radar dish there of some kind. But I can also look at my ship from outside, and it's got ridiculously large undercarriage. But I can, as you can see, scroll around it in 3D. And I believe I can zoom in out. Yeah, there we go, look. Um, so there's the eagle from this game. Uh, there's another ship over there on the pad over there. And they've got working navigation lights and all sorts of cool stuff. And there's rules in this game, like there are in Elite Dangerous. You can't just launch, okay? You've got to, you can see I've got a, 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 no, per, a no permission sign there. I've got to ask for permission to go. So you know, I'm going to ask for a launch request. I can go to the shipyard and I can browse other ships, for example. So there's a few other ships on, on there's, a, there's a constrictor there. I can have a look at the check the spec, you know, spec, uh, check the specs and all that kind of stuff, um, which is quite good. But I, at the moment, I want to request launch, so I'm going to ask that. We're now cleared for cleared for launch. We can actually take off. So let's go back to the thing. Now we're going to launch. Just amazing graphics, and there we go. Look. Okay, so we're now up, uh, undercarriage up, um, and we're going to take a leisurely shot. Now I'm using the mouse to steer the ship, which is by far the easiest way to do it in this game. Now, a, a Frontier Elite 2 doesn't work like modern elites, okay? You'll notice here that I've got two reticles, right? I've got one, the, the kind of horizontal one and the vertical one here is my attitude vector, okay? And that's where my ship is pointing, okay? The other one, the diagonal one, showing where my ship is actually going, Okay, <laughs> the two are not the same in Elite Frontier, um, Elite Two, and Frontier First Encounters. Uh, I can be going a completely different direction to either of them, um, 
and I'm just going to increase the speed. Now, what the other thing I also do is you notice I've got actual speed and set speed. So basically, I dial in a speed I want to go to, which is a realistic speed. You can see here 281 kilometers per hour at the moment, really low, because um, I'm just tootling along. Um, and then the, the autopilot will bring the engines up to speed until I hit that speed, and then it will take it. So it's, it's exactly like FA off, but all the time. There is no help. OK, <laughs> it's, it's FA off exactly as an Elite Dangerous, but there's no help right at all. Um, other than there is automatic stabilization, which is which is useful. Now, if we have a look outside the ship, you'll notice that my engines are not doing anything at the moment because my set speed is virtually the same as my actual speed. Now, if I set my set speed and you'll notice if I increase it, um, the engines come on. That's that whistling noise. I can set the speed to anything I like. Right up until about one third of the speed of light. This is all um, you know, pseudo realistic stuff, okay? So I'm gonna set the speed to orbital speed now, which is, um, there we go, about 30 kilometers per second, okay? So this is all done with proper maths, right? And that kettle of boil, I know it sounds right. So we're flying through the clouds now, which is, which is all that. Now the engines are on because, and they're on at full throttle, as you can see, because, um, the actual speed is nowhere near the set speed. So until the actual speed matches up with the set speed, those engines will continue to fire. Um, and we've also got a frame of reference. We're kind of relative to Merlin, which is the planet we just left. Um, and we can see now the planet is now receding behind us. Uh, and what I'm going to do, um, just to aid us getting into orbit. So now here, watch what, as I alter the course of the ship, okay, I can point the ship wherever I like, but the attitude vector takes a moment to catch up with it because the ship has to roll to its course right um, so it's a very very sophisticated game and you could do all sorts of clever stuff now I can do a gravitational slingshot around that gas giant up there um, with my engines off because um, Frontier Elite 2 does map gravity right and if I don't go fast enough I'll crash into the gas giant if I go too fast there we go we've just left the atmosphere um, we can see it, the planet now receding behind us um, and we can see the curve of the planet okay now why is the, why is you know you may think well, it's just a, it's just a few colored lines well yes it is but it it gave the game a vast amount of atmosphere because as you began to land on the planet the sky would change color and all sorts of things okay so it's all very good now the other thing we're traveling at normal speed here so we're eight minutes into our flight we can speed up time and this is the way that this version of Elite, the second game, got around the problem of how do I get to the planet in any half reasonable time? The answer is you don't. It takes you weeks, right? Literally weeks in some cases, to get from anywhere to anywhere else. So if you hyperspace into a into a system, um, and the, the you, know, you generally hyperspaced in this version on the outskirts of the system, not near the star. So in Elite Dangerous, you come out near the star, right? In this version, you came out in the, in the depths of the solar system you had to you know fly in but in order to get there it was like weeks and weeks of travel so what you had in this version of elite wasn't um you know magical frame shift drives that could do that in case you basically used your main engines um at full thrust in normal space and in order to make that happen in a relatively sensible amount of time in the game there we have just achieved 30 kilometers per second you would speed up time so here's the first one right okay so I'm speeding up time. Sp time is now traveling as fast as possible. <laughs> it's, it's twice as fast as it normally would, right? Um, you can see the clock. And then I can triple it again. Each one is the square of the previous one, right? Um, so if I do that, then the planet starts to recede. And it looks like we're traveling faster, but we're not. We're still traveling at 32 kilometers a second. Time is happening faster, right? Um, so if I, again, if I slow it back down and we look out the front, and we can see that we haven't really made much progress in getting close to the, the gas giant. But if I speed time up a lot, there we go, we can now see that we're now half an hour into the flight, right? Um, and the gas giant is beginning to move, right? Um, and then we can speed it up a lot. There we go, right? And it's the engines came on there a moment because the gravity of the gas giant is affecting our course and the, the computer is trying to maintain course. Um, and so <laughs> it gets a bit weird. Uh, <laughs> trying to work this out. So there we are. We're going past the rings of the gas giant, which is which is all very pretty, right? Um, let's try and zoom in there. And that's on three times. So it's taking us an hour of real flight, if you like, to get to that 
um, gas giant at the speed that the spaceship is traveling. And then there's the moon that we came from in the background. Now, as we continue to fly away, you'll notice that the moon rotates and moves on its own orbit. So I'm just going to keep it running for a bit and then we'll increase the speed. And there we go, look. At that speed, you can see the moon that we came from is orbiting the planet. So in this game, nothing was static. Everything was moving around as you would expect. You can even see the, um, the cloud there on that gas giant moves around, right? It's very, very clever. So yeah, the graphics are low res, but this thing here, and yeah, um, Daddy Hoggy's quite right, it's called the Star Dreamer. It was designed to stop the pilot from noticing the effects of um, long du duration space flight, right? It was a big thing in the law as to how this worked. Um, now, if you got attacked, you would instantly be brought back to normal time, okay? So you could deal with any spaceships that you encountered. That's how it worked. Notice our frame of reference has shifted as well now relative to Aster, rather than, because it's the biggest gravitational thing uh, in our vicinity, the gas giant. Um, and we can also see on the galactic chart here, where is it? Uh, that one, we can see where we are, okay? So this is the orrery, which took a long time for Elite Dangerous to catch up with. We can see there's our position, right? That's where we are, oops, uh, relative to, Merlin is the place where we started, there's Aster. Um, our position is now there, okay? Uh, relative to that system. Um, and then we can see the entire system, we're in the Ross 145 system, there's uh, another small planet called Dust Ball, and then there's um, the star, okay? Um, and we can, if we um, try and hyperspace, so let's go to, I don't know, let's go to Ellipse on Indy. Is that in range? Uh, looks like it is. So let's try and, does that work? Might be out of range. Not sure what's in range of the ship. <laughs> uh, doesn't look like the way it's so choose, man. Can't remember what the original trade route was. Uh, Let's go to the land. I think that one works. Uh, that's not allowing us to hyperspace. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, Ross, yeah, um, yeah. A lot of these stars are actual real, which is again, that's another quite cool thing about the game. We should be able to get to Barnard Star, 5.2 light years away. Oh, I can't remember the controls. <laughs> there we go. The hyperspace is engaged, right? So we're going to hyperspace, right? There we go. Um, and boom, we go through this magical thing. Now, here's another thing that was quite cool, okay? Um, when you came out of hyperspace, you left a hyperspace um, marker, okay? And you also left uh, one in the previous system when you went into hyperspace. Now, when you got better at the game, you could buy a hyperspace scanner, which you could scan that hyperspace hole and find out where um, the ship had gone to. Now, if, if you had a faster hyperdrive than the ship that had gone, you'll notice it took us actually um, seven days to go through hyperspace there. It's now the 8th of January. It was the 1st of January when we started. So it took us seven days to do that trip through hyperspace. So hyperspace in this version of Elite was really, really slow, okay? Uh, it took you days to travel through, not like what we have in Elite Dangerous. But that meant if you could make the jump that the ship had gone through um, before, you know, if you had a faster hyperdrive, you could get there in four days. You could arrive at the hyperspace destination before the ship that you were chasing got there, and you could camp out at this hyperspace wormhole, wait there for it to arrive, and then ambush it when it turned up. Okay, so there was a lot of cool gameplay in this game set around ambushing ships um, that had slow hyperdrives, right? Which was which is a very cool game dynamic, right? Um, and I've got no idea what's in this system, so let's go and. See if we can find somewhere to go. There is a single space station there called Boston Base. So let's see if we can find it. Oops. Uh, Birmingham, Birmingham World. What a lovely sounding place. <laughs> Boston Base. There it is. Right. So I think I click on it and I click on that and then click on it again. That locks us on. Okay. Right, so it's telling us that the target is 11.21 AU away, okay? Astronomical units. So I need to switch the autopilot on and the ship will fly itself there. I haven't got to do anything. 
Okay. Now it doesn't. There's no frame shift drive or jump drive, right, in this game. So in order to get there, we literally have to fly through normal space in order to get there. Um, so there it is, and you know it's the, it's now eight. It's eight forty on the eighth of January. But in order to get to Birmingham World, it's going to take us literally days to get there. If I let this simulation run now in normal mode, it would sit there doing it. Um, can you go to Polaris in this game? No, you can't. Still permit locked, even after 100 years. So Polaris is a big mystery. We, we, we do need to talk about that. Um, so I'm going to speed up the time dilation. And we're just thrusting, okay, using normal space. There is no frame shift drive at all. So we've. this is another thing that's interesting for the law is that we have lost technology between the original Elite and this version in terms of the capability of the ships. The ships in this version of the game can only travel through normal space. They do not have a frame shift drive or a jump drive or anything like that. They can only travel through normal space and hyperspace, obviously. Uh, so there we are, full time compression. And we can see that the time is coming down now. But it's now the 9th of January. That's an entire day, right? And what happens at the halfway point is is very pseudo realistic, right? Watch what's happened. Okay, we're now more, we're only three AU away. Um, you notice the ship hasn't spun around, but it did. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that briefly for a moment. Is that it's um, it's firing its retro thrusters to slow down again. So it speeds up halfway there, and then it th re it thrusts back um, for the other half, right, and slows down again. Um, um, why the ship doesn't flip over and use its main engines, I'm not entirely sure. But um, ships have forward thrusters and retro thrusters in this version of the game, um, and that's the way it works. Okay, but no, no magical frame shift drive. So there we are. We're coming into the inner solar system now. I'm going to slow that down a little bit so we can see it come in. And with a bit of luck, the autopilot will dock us. Now, you are so this is the only problem with this game, is you are so dependent on the autopilot that um, it was quite a bit, it was somewhat more of a point and click adventure, right? Uh, <laughs> very clever technically, and if you like the realism, very cool, but gameplay, you know, as you notice, nothing, nothing Nothing's really happened, other than we've just gone somewhere, okay? And now we're closing on target. Um, there it comes, let's just... You kind of have to juggle the... Um, there we go, we're coming in now. Uh, juggle the time compression to kind of get an approach that you can actually see. Um, and then, there we go. Well, and then it... It plays the view down you. There we go. And there's the space station. There's a there's a rock behind. This is Birmingham World Space Station. A hundred bits if you can do. No, this. <laughs> I'm not even going to even attempt that, Steve, is because this is FA off with con this keyboard controls and no no safeties whatsoever. So I'm going to let the computer do the docking. Um, but it yeah it does do a bad job. It matches the um, it matches the rotation as you can see. The space station is still spinning. A bit more sophisticated than the ones in the original game. Um, you know, you've got lights and it's very 2001-ish. And again, you'll notice here as we get closer, the resolution is too low at the moment, but you will see Boston Base written on the bottom of the space station here. And, um, you yeah, know, that's, that's a nice little touch. You can see the docking bay with lights inside it. And the docking bay does have some mechanics to it. Not, nothing like Elite Dangerous, but it does accept your ship and you kind of go through a slot and all that sort of stuff, which is, which is quite cool. And you get this, obviously, the music playing. Um, now this music was first used in Elite in the Commodore 64 version, I believe. It wasn't in the BBC version. Uh, the Commodore 64 version did feature the docking music, I think. Daddy Hoggy may be able to tell me otherwise. Um, but it certainly was in this version of Elite and the following one. Um, so, um, um, so yeah, so this game, um, very technically impressive, okay? Very technically impressive. But, um, dare I say it, not as much fun, okay? The combat in this was very point and clicky. Um, not the sort of visceral airplanes in space sort of um, feel that we've, we've come to love with um, uh, the original Elite, and which Elite Dangerous pays tribute to. Now the reason, one of the reasons FA Off is in the original Elite is because of this, okay? So people wanted the f six degrees of freedom movement that this game provided, um, but 
it was felt that there needed to be a compromise between that and the airplanes in space sort of Star Warsy trope that we're used to with computer games in order to make it fun. So that's the reason that Elite Dangerous is a bit of a mix of both of the original game and this one in order to make it fun, but also to add a little bit of realism in there. Um, so there we go, and it kind of rotates us round and the doors close and there we go. So um, technically hugely impressive game, right? Technically hugely impressive. Um, and you know, it costs us three credits to land and we're now docked, right? So there we go. And we can trade and we can do other things. So there's a stock market here. We can buy animal meat and liquor and medicines and we've got these natty photo fit people. <laughs> um, there are missions as well, sometimes. Bulletin board, there we go. Um, so, you know, the missions here will, will also seem familiar to you. Look, wanted passage for a small group to the Formal Hall system. So we had passenger runs, okay? Um, removal required. Bertha Chekhov is no longer wanted in the Ross 4-5 system. Will pay 5,000 credits, okay? So assassination missions. Uh, the, med the military, you know, the Federation and the Empire exist by this point. And, um, you yeah, know, there's, there's other stuff going on as well, so... Um, yeah, mission system, pretty sophisticated, okay, for, for the time. And Elite Dangerous didn't get this sophisticated for quite a while after launch, uh, which always made us chuckle a little bit how much this, this game had. Considering it also had planetary landings as well, right? Um, as well. And this game was like a megabyte, okay? Okay, that's a lot bigger than the 32K, 32K of the original game, but for a megabyte, okay, one megabyte. And that's where, well, that's, that's where all the stuff sort of fitted in. So it was a big deal. It was a big deal. So that's that's Elite Two, okay? This is 1993. So let's let's move on a little bit um, to Elite Three, as it is. I'm going to have to fire up DOSBox again and redo it because it crashes my program when I come out of it. So apologies for this. Well, I'm getting good at this now. Uh, C drive, CD, document. Those of you who lived through this generation of computers will recognize this. <laughs> Oop, wrong folder. Uh, now we do have to do a bit of setup because co computers back then were not standardized, right? You could buy um, different sound cards, different graphics cards, and all sorts of things, and um, none of them were compatible with each other. <laughs> it's an absolute nightmare. So you have to check that it works. So I'm just going to test the digital. Right, I've got to test. I've, you know, you've got, if I've got a skizzy hard disk, it's it's bad. Right? The sound card is now working. The sound card is now working. That's good news. And then the MIDI is the sound side of it, which works as well. There we go. So we're good. I'm going to save that system information <laughs> and start up the game. Right. So this is now two years on. Right. This is two years on. Uh, yes, yeah, the days before plug and play. So when you added a piece of hardware into your PC back then, um, it had to you had to tell it where it was. You had to set all the parameters manually in the software, right? Otherwise, it just wouldn't work. You didn't just plug it in and it would download the drivers. You had to put it in physically, tell the computer where it was programmatically, then download the drivers and hope it worked. And then when I say download, I meant use a floppy disk, right? You didn't download things back then. Um, Right, so yes, and this is this is it. This is the second game. This is the third game, shall I say? Now, there was quite a lot of controversy about this game, um, and we will um, we won't go into it too much. But f suffice to say, this is where David Braben and Ian Bell fell out in a big way, right? You'll notice it says copyright David Braben, 1995. It doesn't mention Ian Bell at all. Now he wasn't involved in this game, right? Um, now the deal was that. Um, David wanted to continue doing the lead, okay? Uh, fair enough. Um, and he and Ian Bell did actually collaborate on an Elite 2 um, after the success of the original Elite. But for various reasons that didn't happen. They, I think they tried it originally on the 8-bit computers at the time. And um, yeah, they weren't powerful enough, so they had to wait for the 16-bit generation. By the time the 16-bit generation was out and David started coming up with the ideas for the game that we just saw, Frontier Elite 2, um, the um, Ian Bell kind of lost interest a bit, right? So David's basically said, look, if I pay you royalties for this game, the second game, um, can I can I develop Elite? 
and Ian Bell won't basically yes. Um, the deal was, if you make any expansion packs for the second game, then I get a cut of those as well, but at a reduced level. And David Braben said, yep, that's fine. And when this game came out, um, David Braben said it wasn't an expansion. Okay? It was a new game. Therefore, he didn't need to give Ian Bell any royalties. Now, whether this game is or isn't an expansion, I will let you make your own minds up. I'm not going to say <laughs> on air. <laughs> but it's significantly different in some ways. Uh, you'll notice that the graphics have got shades on them and various other bits and pieces. Um, but in general terms, there's quite a lot of similarities as well. Um, so let's go and have a look at it. So here we are sitting on a surface of it. Now we have put a funky GUI now. A little, bit more, a little bit more sophisticated than before. But in general, things work quite similarly. Okay, so we have to request <laughs> takeoff clearance. Um, and similar message to before. And now we have to switch the engines on down here. And then we take off. And we point up. And there's our attitude indicator. We set our speed. I hope. There we go. Uh, it seems to be on manual mode for the engines. There we go. Oh, that's the set speed. Yeah, it's been moved slightly. It's now there rather than there. Okay. Uh, I can look around the ship as I did before. Um, apologies for the slightly natty um, classical music playing in the background. Let's wait to switch that off. Sound effects. Music off. Sorry, can't subject you to MIDI classical music. <laughs> uh, right, how do we get back to return to game? Here we go. Right, so let's put the undercarriage up. Which is not updated on the screen for some reason. That's a bit weird. Right, anyway, let's get going. Uh, so, you know, with different ships, this is a Saka ship, which actually features in um, John Harper's book, the. Um, uh, and here the wheel. He he did a lot on Frontier First Encounters. Uh, oh, I've got the game on pause. That's why. There we are. Um, so the time dilation controls are here now, as you can see. Um, there we go. And the planets have got this. I think it's called Gaurad shading, um, which makes them look a little bit more realistic than they did before. Uh, they're very flickery, as you can see, but they kind of do work. Space is still blue. Um, and this is this game is set as you notice here 3250. It's it's um, 50 years on from the game that we just saw. So it is different, <laughs> but it's it's quite <laughs> it's quite similar. You may you may notice um, some some serialities in the way this works. Um, now, if I go through what we have here, this is where the Alliance first appears in the law. Okay, so if I zoom out here. Which, this is a bad UI design because I can't get to the controls at the moment because <laughs> I can't see them. Um, which I <laughs> uh, where's the zoom? See, I, I can't. There we are. So I can zoom out a little bit. Okay, so the Alliance now exists uh, in, in, the, um, in the law. There we go, that's the zoom in. And if I move around, you can see the Alliance is in the same position as, as Alioth, which is exactly where it is um, of the... Um, uh, in, in Elite Dangerous. Um, and if we go down a bit, we can see here the core systems, which is where Sirius and Sol and everything is. And if we go a bit further down, we can see the Imperial systems, and there's Akinar there, right? Um, and um, you can see it says Im uh, Imperial Capital, Seat of the Emperor. So all that law exists by this point. This is what Elite Dangerous is based off, um, more so than the original Elite uh, law. Uh, and it's all it all exists in this um, in this game. Now there is a substantial amount of expansion in the gameplay here. The mission system is very similar, okay, virtually identical. The trading system is virtually identical. The ship buying system is virtually identical. There are some different ships, but there's it's basically the way the same way it works. You'll notice all the navigation controls are okay. There's a funky backdrop here, which makes it look a bit more spacey. But essentially, 
uh, apart from the upgraded graphics, is exactly the same mechanism, right? Uh, so you can see why Ian Bell was a little bit miffed at being cut out of any royalties for this version of the game. I, I think he did have a bit of a point. Um, but yeah, that battle is long, long since over. Um, so, you know, the galactic map is still exists there. It still looks exactly the same as it did before. Uh, so, you know, a lot of similarities. The UI, the visual display is very similar. There are some graphical enhancements here and everything is shaded, but similar sort of design, right? Okay. And a very, very big and complicated reticle here, uh, which kind of gets you in the way a bit of the time. Um, but, you know, a similar design, similar game. Uh, so is this the time of John Jameson? Yes. Yeah, so the chap you are, the interesting thing is, if you read the manuals, and again, we'll go into this in the law talk. If you read the manuals for the games, they tell you who you are. Okay. The first thing it says in the elite manuals, congratulations, you've just been given a Cobra Mark III with 100 credits. Um, if you read the second one, it says, and I'll read it out on the law talk in a bit more detail. It basically says, uh, congratulations, your grandfather's just passed away and he's left you 100 credits in a ship. <laughs> and so the line of Jamesons, which you, in these single player games, ostensibly play as the commander, um, continues on inside the law, right? And the chap that we are now flying the spaceship in is, um, um, is, um, uh, is, um, is, is the guy who dies and is left in the Cobra in Elite Dangerous that's crashed on that moon, which we'll go, we'll go and visit. We'll go and visit as part of the law too. So, um, yeah, no. um, interestingly enough, the letter that comes from, you get, a, you get a solicitor's letter about the will of your grandfather or your great grandfather. I can't remember if it's great grandfather or, 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 um, or what it is. Um, but it, um, um, yeah, basically it comes from a company called Snoo, uh, Sneer, no, um, Sue, Cripple and Sneer. <laughs> Which is just, which is quite a cool name for a set of lawyers, really. Um, but there we go. Um, so, um, so yeah. So that's 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 the weird thing. So anyway, we'll go into that um, a bit more. Um, <laughs> um, but so I'm a bit confused. So if E2 could only be made with Bell's permission, how can E3 not require his permission? Um, well, you see, um, this is where this is basically the source of the argument, right? Is that. Um, 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 Ian Bell gave David permission to do Frontier Elite 2 and call it Elite 2 um, as long as he got some royalties from it because of the Elite name. Um, you'll notice that this game doesn't have the word Elite in it. It's called Frontier First Encounters. It's technically at the at kind of not an Elite game in that sense <laughs> because at this point the IP position of the the brand elite, if you like, the trademark elite, was being disputed all over the shop. Uh, so yeah, it was quite confusing. So um, the the deal that Bra uh, uh, David and Ian had signed for Elite Two was that if there was a uh, an expansion pack for Elite Two, then David uh, that Ian would be entitled to some royalties, but a reduced level of royalties. But this game was billed as not being an expansion pack. And it's not an expansion pack because it doesn't install over Elite 2. It's a separate game. Um, you know, you have to buy this on its own. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> but it's very, 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 very derivative and obviously clearly based on a lot of the same code. Um, so who was right and who was wrong? I think, to be fair, um, I can see both sides. Um, I wouldn't want to be in a place. And basically because of this, okay, because of this fallout between Ian Bell and David Braben, Elite then languished, right, for a long, long time. This is 1995 and we hear nothing, nothing at all, okay, official about Elite um, from anybody for more than a decade, okay, more than a decade. Um, <laughs> so by that logic, wouldn't Elite Dangerous fall into that and Bell might be able to collect them? Well, um, there have been attempts to, to make that happen, okay? Because Ian Bell's still out there. And the, uh, he sold his IP rights to other people. And that is a story that has yet to run its entire course, okay? So this, <laughs> this is actually the law, the meta law now. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're getting into the meta law of elite dangerous, right? Uh, which I haven't, haven't got time to get into. Maybe we should do a whole episode on that. I try and figure out what happened. But um, yeah, so the, the the legal wranglings around elite outside of the game, but you know, in the real world, are um, are just as weird and wacky as. <laughs> actual game lore itself and there's a little story there so anyway we'll go there at some point but anyway so that's elite three okay frontier first encounters now there's one other cool thing in this that wasn't in the elite two which is something that we miss we're missing in elite dangerous right um and i'll show you what it is if i can find out remember where it is uh I'm trying to remember now there we go right in Frontier First Encounters, you had newspapers, okay, which, um, unlike the, you know, kind of like Galnet, actually, but whereas Galnet is just one source, right, in this game, you had, like, five newspapers, um, and um, you had the Imperial one, the Imperial Herald, you had the Federal Times, you had the Random Intergalactic Gossip, Frontier News, and the Universal Scientist, okay, and these would all give different spins on events in the galaxy. So, you know, surprisingly enough, the Imperial one would say, well, the Empire is awesome and the Federation is scum. And the Federal Times would be, the Federation is awesome and the Empire is scum. And the Universal Scientists would concentrate on scientific discoveries and the other ones would just be full of all sorts of things. But there would be clues, right, in these newspapers to what was going on as you went through the single player missions. Because all these games are single player, right? There's no PvP, there's no multiplayer, okay? As you went through your missions, these newspapers would, would report on the antics of a certain commander who was doing stuff. And depending on whether you went one way or went the other, the newspapers would report favourably or not favourably on your antics. Uh, and they were brilliantly done. And this is one of the things we really miss in Elite Dangerous, is there's no texture to the galaxy. Now, these things were brilliant because you get the Imperial slant on it. You know, if you, if you had a mission where you had to steal something from the Empire... Um, yeah, the next day after you completed the mission, the Imperial message would be some absolute scum has stolen a historic ar ar you know, argument from the Empire. This is outrageous. We demand something should be done. Right. And then the Federal one would go heroic, heroic entrepreneur <laughs> reclaims stolen Imperial artifact to the Federation. Hurrah. You know, all this sort of stuff. And it was really, really good <laughs> because you get all this kind of stuff coming around that would kind of give you and you feel like you were in a universe where something mattered right which was the whole point of this thing and it was really really clever uh something that we don't have something we could have but we don't have um because you know that's not there right um it is exactly like drunken you shall write a strongly worded letter to the imperial the federal times yeah and it was done really really well really really clever so that's something that this game did have um, right, we must we must move on. It's it's twenty God, it's twenty past nine already. Um, right, so that's nineteen ninety five, right? Nineteen ninety five, and then there is nothing. Okay, Braben goes off the air. Frontier. That is the first game, actually. That one there, Frontier First Encounter, is the first game that Frontier Developments, as a company, published. Okay, and they published it through another publisher, actually, technically speaking. But it's the first game that they did as a company. Okay. Then they go off and make connectimals and they go off and make, you know, um, roller coaster things and Elite disappears, right? Disappears. So from 1995, now I was, I was 25 in 1995 and that's the last time we hear anything official about Elite at all. Um, that second game only came out on the PC. Um, uh, although I th think maybe it came out on one of the Amigas, somebody will tell me. Um, and that was... That was it. Gone. Silence. Nothing at all. Okay. And so the fans take over. Okay. Now, in the early 2000s, uh, a group of fans got together and said, hey, we want to play Elite again. <laughs> um, so, oh, it did uh, came out on the, it did come out on the Amiga. I knew the uh, Frontier Elite 2 came out on the Amiga, but I wasn't sure about Frontier First Encounters. Um, but, um, and it had lots of bugs in it as well, but we don't need to talk about that. So anyway, so years go past and nothing was, um, um, nothing, nothing, nothing happened until about 2003, 2004, when a group of, uh, a group of, well, mostly actually one developer, a chap by the name of Giles Williams, basically said, I want to, I want to play a Lita game. And he wrote it again 
from scratch based on the way that the original game worked, but not using not reverse engineering something. Because that game I showed you, the new kind, was a reverse engineer of the BBC version and then ported to PC and enhanced. The fans said, let's make a version that isn't reverse engineered. So ideally we avoid the kind of IP copyright problems that plagued the new kind and have ended up having that version take off the market. Because David Braben at this point was highly protective okay, of the IP. Anything, if you try to sell any version of Elite um, for any platform after 1995, he would take you down, okay? He's protecting his IP. And I don't think that's an unreasonable thing for him to do, but it stopped Elite from being anywhere on anything forever, as far as we could tell, if you reverse engineered the original code. So this project, Elite, was um, not reverse engineered from anything. It was written from the ground up, originally written on the Mac in Objective C++, I believe, um, or just Objective C maybe, I can't remember now. And um, it was an attempt, originally on the Mac, but then ported to the PC and Unix, to allow us to play Elite again. And this is what it looked like. This is what it looks like now, should I say. Um, it didn't look this good when it first started, but um, uh, Charles Williams, Jen Aiton, and contributors from 2003, and it's still going now. I downloaded this a few weeks ago. This is the current version. Um, and this is a faithful reproduction of the original Elite by the fans of the original game, so people can still play um, on the um, on modern, modern hardware, right? And take advantage of 3D graphics cards and DirectX and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and, and this is game. Now, the beauty of this, the beauty of this game is that you could mod it, okay? So because it was written by fans, there's never any commercial attempt on this. It's all Creative Commons. Nobody made any money out of this whatsoever. Um, anybody could pitch it. If you had the skill, you could write missions for it. You could write chips for it. You could write graphics for it. You could write anything you like for it in an add-ons mechanism. It was open-hooded and allowed you to add anything you wanted to the game, okay? So um, we can play it in multiple modes. We can play it in what is called strict mode, which basically emulates the original Elite exactly, okay? Um, all expansion packs are disabled, okay? You can't, you can only, it's basically the original Elite, okay? But if you play it in normal mode or easy start mode, um, you start in exactly the same position as the original Elite, but um, it uh, allows you to um, add things to it. So let's just do a normal, let's do an easy start, okay? And this one starts at, it gives us a little bit more money. You'll notice the UI is very, very familiar. Um, but what we can do, if I just press escape here for a moment, I think it's this game. Mm, maybe it's not. Well, if I lost the keys. Oh, there we go, game options, right? Um, yeah, I can do the wireframe graphics. I can switch to wireframe graphics mode, which is very, very cool, right? Um, so let's just sorry, let's just go to return to menu there. Um, here's the expansion packs, and it's so well done now. In the olden days, you had to download these yourself, but you can manage, um, update the expense, uh, pensions, um, patch, let's just see if we can get that to work, there we go. Um, there are 621 expansion packs for this game, okay? All done by the community. Um, and um, we can install, okay, um, things like add-ons for beginners, okay? It just gives you extra missions. Uh, the Bank of the Black Monks, okay? So if you need to borrow some cash, you can borrow it from these shady dudes. Um, <laughs> well then, if you renege on your money, they'll come and hunt you down. Um, Deep Space Pirates, um, Explorers Club, uh, Fuel Stations. Um, there are... Um, uh, ring racers, there are all sorts of things okay, that you can add in here. Um, um, there are um, things like um, your ad here, which p fills the universe of adverts for things like, uh, they're all puns actually, because they basically, anything that's got an O in it, it gets replaced with a double O. <laughs> so it's like Tisku, as, as in the supermarket chain, and all sorts of things like that. And, and the things that allow you to tow other ships and, and store stuff, and it's very, very cool, okay. Um, and they're all written by the fans. Stuff that we wanted to be in the game um, that um, wasn't in the original Elite, right? Now, one of the things, and I will, um, 
I will show you this. I'm not going to show you this today because I want to keep the surprise, okay? Um, but list installed expansion packs. You will notice that I have installed three expansion packs into my version of Elite called the Tianisla Orbital Graveyard. Now, this is something that existed. It, well, it didn't exist in the original game, but was referred to in the novel that came with the original game, which was called The Dark Wheel. And anybody who knows about The Dark Wheel will know the significance of the TNS Orbital Graveyard. Now, in all the official versions of Elite, the graveyard is not there. Okay, But in Elite, thanks to the fans, right? Thanks to the fans, not thanks to anybody else. Thanks to the fans who love the original game and love the original lore, you can go and visit the Tianis Little Orbital Graveyard in game. Okay. Um, so I'm not, I don't know, this is very mean, but I'm not going to show you that today because I want to save that for the law tour. But um, if, if anybody wants to download Elite, you can go and do it yourself. But um, we will go and visit the Tianis Little Orbital Graveyard in Elite in order to go and see it. Um, 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 but we can, we can do it, right? We can, and the beauty of Elite is we can create anything. Um, in Elite, okay, and go there with decent quality graphics, okay. So let's go, let's just go and have a look at the game, okay. So let's launch from the space station, and this is all fan created stuff, okay. This is not, this is not official, this is homage, this is, this is for the love of Elite, right. Nobody's made any money out of this. This game is entire, and I think it works, yeah, it does look, it works with my joystick. I've got to get my joystick out. There is no yaw still, uh, but we have kind of pretty planets and we have a backdrop that half looks good. We have a scan that works, but the UI is exactly like the original game, right? Uh, on purpose, on purpose. And the keys are um, not quite the same, <laughs> just remember. But everything works, um, everything works the same way. Okay, and if I turn around, there is, in this case, not the Coriolis space station. This is one of the other ones. This is the 12-sided um, one, which I can't remember the name of. But it works just like the original game now we are back in I keep forgetting there's no your <laughs> just really once you've got used to having your on elite dangerous it's quite good but you can see the graphics here are much more sophisticated um, we've got proper 3d sized objects and we can as we as we spin past this space station uh, the Sun gets eclipsed and then you can see we've got a docking bay there and there's flashing lights and there's graphic it, it, it looks nice right okay and you can uh, yeah you can the beauty about this game is you can customize anything the UI the ships, you can buy and swap different ships. Um, you can change graphics. You can do all sorts of stuff. Um, it's done nicely, okay? So this is a Galcop space station. We'll talk about Galcop in the law tour, what happened to them. But we're back in the, 30, the year 30. Well, actually, we decided, actually, that this game is set slightly later than the original Elite, in the year 3140, so 15 years after the original game, but before the second Elite game. Um, uh, and, yeah, we've got... Nice graphics. There is a way of getting outside the ship as well, but I haven't figured out the key bindings yet. Um, there's another ship over there. Actually, let's just go and have a look. We can see that there's a few other ships on the scanner, actually. Um, and it, it works. It works. It's elite, but nice looking elite, right? Okay. Um, and there's a ship. It looks like it's just about to dock, actually. I don't know what that ship is. Let's see if we can get in a bit closer, just so you can kind of admire some of the graphics. Um, I don't know what that is actually. Is that a Mori? I think it's a Mori, yeah. So, oops. <laughs> well, the collision detection works. <laughs> don't get too close. Anyway, so that's that's um. Let's just let's just do the do the same thing we did in the original very, very quickly, shall we? Let's go and do. So it's a faithful recreation, as you can see, of the original game. Um, and it's going to take us 13 hours to get there. Well, okay. Let's go and let's go do that. Um, so this is Lave, very pretty looking plane, as you can see. Hyperspace to Leasty, works the same way. Um, uh, install the shields, yeah, yeah well, I, yeah, I haven't played this for. I'm, I'm not used to not having the yaw, actually. That's really freaked me out a little bit, not having the yaw. Um, anyway, hyperspace. And again, those graphics you can change as well. So this is, this again, it's the original Elite in the way it feels. Now there's a, uh, that's the navigation beacon there. So let's jump drive. There we go. We can see there's some police ships there. Now the beauty of this is unlike the original game, 
um, where the ships basically either ignored you or attacked you. In in Oleep, they, they run scripts, okay? They run little, I think it used to be JavaScript. I think it's something else now. Daddy Hoggy will tell me. Um, but they all, oh, we're, now, we're under attack. But this is, okay, they are attacking me, actually. <laughs> I'm getting a bit of solar glare there. All right, let's go up to maximum speed, see if we can. I've only got a pulse laser on this thing, so I'm not going to be very good. So that one's firing at me. Um, so we're under attack, that's nice. By a massive, massive. I've got a, I've got a, I think we did, yes. <laughs> so it's just as brutal. At least he's supposed to be safe. Why do I keep getting killed? At least he. <laughs> anyway, there you go. There's a bit of combat. Um, I think they moved from Python to either Py yeah, JavaScript to Python or Lua. So, yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, there's, yeah, you, you know, buy some decent stuff for your ship, right? Um, but um, all, the, all the ships run AI scripts and they can be programmed to do different things. So some of them will hunt in packs, there'll be pirates, some of them will trade and they'll stop and they'll swap things and they'll move around and they patrol areas and all sorts of all sorts of things in there. So the beauty of this version of Elite is you can do anything with it. At least D2 Drew Zero, if I kid. <laughs> um, you can do anything with it, okay? And we've put the T in this little orbital graveyard in. The generation ships from the original manual, they first appeared in here, okay? Um, it is a fantastic game. And um, yeah, we can let's, let's have a quick look at the ship library. So this is just the stock ship library, okay? Um, so we got the Cobra Mark One, um, we got the Third Lance in there, um, and yeah, the Galcop Viper, Galcop Interceptor, Gecko, the crates in there. I mean, I mean, these are fan-made ships, right? Does it support joystick? Yes, it does. So I was using my. I can't really show you. I can't pick it up with the camera there, but yeah, that's the hotel. So this is all. Um, and it's all free, right? Totally and utterly free. Nobody's ever made any money out of this. This has been just done for the love of um, Elite, okay? And the guy, um, yeah, um, Daddy Hogg is mentioning Griff. The guy who did the graphics for this is a chap by the name of Griff, a very, very talented artist, as you can see. Um, and he tried to imagine the all the original ships from the original Elite, right? But much more closely based on how they appeared in the game. Okay, in the original game, so they're still cheese triangles in shape, but he's sort of added things to them to make them look, you know, much more funky and spacey, but very, 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 very close to the original design. So you can still recognize them directly from the original game. Uh, I don't know if it doesn't, it doesn't show us the Thargoid, which is a bit annoying. Um, <laughs> oh no, there we go, Thargoid ships. So there we go, there's the Thargoid warship. Um, that's what the Thargoid warship looks like in in Olite, um, which is quite cool. There's a weapons, uh, missiles, cascade mines. Those are very, very dangerous. They can kill you very easily. Um, then you've got into the, there's a Coriolis space station, the Galcop one. Dodecahedron space station from Galcop. The Isohedron space station. And then there's a rock hermit, hermit there, which is a kind of hollowed out asteroid. Um, which is quite cool. You can see it has like a little landing base in it. Um, and then there we have the uh, uh, asteroid cargo container, escape pods, um, navigation buoys, and etc. etc. So, yeah, all sorts of stuff that's quite cool. But a customizable, open hooded, you know, if you just can do a little bit of programming in Python, you can add stuff to this. I actually did one myself years and years ago. I added a pulsar. To um, thing and um, you know the tin is orbit graveyard was created by a good friend of mine, Dave Seslin Hughes, um, and Daddy Hoggy did a whole bunch of adverts for it. So there are some people who created stuff for it on the stream right now, and an amazing version of, of Elite, okay, but for the fans, by the fans. Um, why don't we have dodo stations in Elite? Very good question. They were in the original game on the BBC. They don't exist now. Maybe they've been phased out right over the years. Um, who knows? But um, Definitely well worth um, uh, definitely well worth download. Um, oh yeah. I'll exit that out. So um, I wanted to let's just do a docking. I want to <laughs> prove that I can do an original elite docking. <laughs> um, so let's we'll launch out. There we go. So yeah, if you want an authentic elite experience, but you kind of want some half decent graphics. And a whole bunch of bells and whistles because there's loads of new tech in here okay lots of different weapons lots of different guns missiles all sorts of cool stuff okay which adds on to the original game 
um, but it's in the in the absolute flavour of the original game, as you can see, um, and has joystick support. Um, you know, decent modern graphics and so on and so forth. Then this is the game for you. Um, it really is an absolute beautiful homage to the original game. Um, oh, I don't have docking. I didn't know I had to get. Uh, I didn't know I had to get docking clearance. How do I do that? <laughs> Help! Um, I don't know how to get docking clearance. D. So this is the problem. I haven't played this game for a while. Game options. No, it's not that. View keyboard configuration. Maybe there's a docking. <laughs> Maybe there's a docking mode. Uh, docking computer is C, but I haven't got a docking computer installed. So how do I get? Oh God! Request clearance L. There it is. Right. They've obviously updated that since I last played it. <laughs> just quite fun. Let's just get docking clearance then. Right, let's just try that again. We'll go back out again. Um, so I've got to get docking clearance. That's weird, isn't it? There we go. Welsh Gamer is in there with, with some help. L. I didn't know that. That's something they've added since. Right, so I've got to press L. Which doesn't seem to have anything on the UI. Let's hope it's giving me clearance. Right, anyway, let's try and dock. Right. Oh, well, I've got no yaw. <laughs> uh, ah, okay, I haven't got docking clearance. Oh, there we go. No, you do not have talking. I'm pressing L. Uh, do I have to target it? I don't know. Missile locked. That's <laughs> probably not a good idea. No, it's warning me. I can't dock. But L isn't. L isn't responding. Oh, let's just try and dock anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh. Does it, does it kill me if I don't have... Oh, it lets me land anyway. I'll probably get a fine, right? Capel? I don't know. You've been fined on, on the first docking. <laughs> docking without... So anyway, it's got some extra bits and pieces in it, which which make you... What the hell's going on there? Yeah, bloody hell. Exactly. Well done, guys. Bad puns are here. I think... I've got a feeling I... No, I haven't. There we go. I haven't locked the keyboard out. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Everything's working. Apart from the escape button isn't working for some reason. Anyway, that's enough of Oli. But that's that's definitely worth going to investigate, right? If you like your original Elite, it's a cool game. Now, okay, this is all in the gap before Elite Dangerous turns up. Uh, and there's occasional rumours during this decade, in the 2000 to 2010, of Elite 4, as it was called. Uh, but nothing was ever substantiated. David Braben did a few speeches, mentioned that, yes, one day Elite 4 would be coming, but... Then there was nothing, right? And we all began to get quite despondent. Begin think, and so Elite and Elite was one of the things that kept us going in all those years, long before the Kickstarter for Elite Dangerous happened in 2012. Um, but there was another one as well um, called Pioneer, because some people really liked the gameplay, right, of the Frontier Elite Two game. Um, really enjoyed the way that worked, and Pioneer originally was a remake of Frontier Elite 2. Um, um, now, since then, it's no longer an Elite-like, okay? The, the people behind Pioneer decided that they would be similar, but not, not actually an Elite copy, okay? So all of the ships in this game no longer bear any resemblance to the Elite ones. They've been recoded, and they're, they're unique to themselves. But the game... Uh, and it seems to have a slight bug on my um, my computer, but um, the menu here doesn't quite work. But um, the game works very, very similarly to Frontier Elite 2. Um, and here we are on Mars. Planetary landings. Very cool. You'll notice that we have a timer, and we have time compression, and we have a scanner, and, you know, we have uh, things to do, and... I'll just move that so I can see it. We can we can talk to the base, 
uh, well we can look up information about us we can talk to okay uh, slightly dodgy photo fit things but we can <laughs> we can we can refuel and we can buy things and we can request launches we can do other bits and pieces so we can interact we have a galaxy map uh, as you see works in a very similar way to the original frontier elite 2 and is just modern right it's just modern so we can go to Sirius and we can look up a little bit about it um, and we can see it's in our hyperspace range we can get to it so that's good uh, right so what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to request launch there we go oh, I'll do that. Uh, there. okay so there's there's the launch it's operated by the mouse in, in the way that the original elite was and I've got to switch the manual controls and then there we go I'm going to set it to so we start moving. but we've got a nicely kind of pseudo realistic planet we can look around the undercarriage up uh, we can see as the external view of our ship and that's what our ship currently looks like and we can I believe no, that's, that's changing it. It's that one that one Ooh, that's the guns <laughs> don't do that um, there we go, we can look around it. So we have an external camera, sort of pseudo camera if you like, um, of our ship. Uh, I've got a feeling I may have just, uh, unlawful weapons discharge, yes. <laughs> that was my fault, I've now got the police after me I suspect. Um, which is why the music's changed, so that's slightly sinister. Anyway, so we'll keep the engines on for, uh, I've got some targets coming up behind me. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so this was a remake, if you like, originally of Frontier Elite 2, but over the years it's transpired and it's sort of become its own game, but it's very much like that Frontier Elite 2, with the realism being the key thing, uh, and the frames of reference and the real speed, and none of the sort of hyperspace, it does have hyperspace, but it doesn't have the, um, doesn't have the kind of in-system magic frame shift drive, talk jump drive stuff, it, it just uses thrusters, um, and the ships now flip over and use their engines to kind of slow themselves down the main engines to sort of slow themselves down um, in order to get out and so we're leaving Mars now which is quite cool so um, I'm not very I haven't played this game very much yet so I couldn't be pretty crap at flying it but uh, what we should be able to do is switch to this map oh, we're in the we're in the serious system so we started in Seoul there we go. let's go back to Seoul um, we can see that we have a nice orrery um, there's Earth and I think I'm locked on target for Earth, and I can go autopilot, enter medium orbit, enter higher orbit, enter low orbit around the Earth. So let's, let's get to that, and it will automatically start flying the ship for me, right? Um, which is quite nice. And then if I move around, we can see there's there's Mars, and we're. Yeah, we're moving at a strange attitude now because I've just turned the angle of the ship. So if we speed up time, then it will move away in a nice, nice sort of frame. And this again is a fan-generated game because of the love of that original, uh, in this case, Frontier Elite Two. Uh, this this is a fan game based on that, but brought into modern modern graphics again. Uh, we've got the space-time compression to kind of move on there. Okay. So these games exist because we got fed up with waiting, right? <laughs> we got fed up with waiting for a for Elite Four, as we all thought it was going to be called. Um, and uh, Elite is a homage to the original Elite, and this Pioneer is a wonderful homage to uh, Frontier Elite Two. Um, so let's see if we can get to Earth. There we go. Let's get out the time. And. Um, it reproduces a lot of that original gameplay. Now, um, Olite in particular, the one we saw before this one, is particularly... Oh, oh they come they, the police have got up with us. I think we're going to die pretty soon. Yeah, it's the police from Mars. <laughs> Not much I can do. Anyway, um, we're probably going to be dead soon. Yeah, there goes my heart. Oh, they play music when we die. Oh, there we go. And this is exactly the same as the. Um, this is exactly the same as um, Elite, a Frontier Elite to give you <laughs> rest in peace, old Pete. Um, the original game gave you a tombstone as well when you died, uh, which is which is. There we go. Um, 
Let's try, let's try, let's try one of the other start positions. What have we got? Um, a prison station. Okay, so that's in a different place. So let's just launch from on there. What do I have to do? Do I have to? Oh, it does it. There we go. Oh, there's still wild automatic control. Okay. Slightly odd choice of classical music, really, but there we go. Okay, so that's the hub of that space station. Fair enough. Got the undercarriage up. Oh. Okay. Can I turn the engines on? Manual control. Doesn't seem to be doing a great deal. If we didn't buy enough of the ships anyway, I'm not sure quite what I'm doing there. Um, I can move the ship around, but I don't have any control of the engines. Which is a bit weird. Um, anyway, there we go. That's really irritating. Tinkly music now. <laughs> um, oh, there's a moderate start. This is a different one. Okay, so that's on the lips on the Randy. That's a bit nicer. There we go. Um, it's, just, it's more of a montage of dying in Elite. Yes, yeah, so, so it's the problem is it's time to get as much practice on these games, remembering all the keys, right? Um, and uh, all the different game over screens. But yeah, so these games existed in the gap, right? So between 1995 and 2012, uh, 2012, there was no official Elite at all. You couldn't buy it. You couldn't go and play it. Um, there was nowhere to download it from. It was all unofficial stuff, right? Um, so in the gap, you know, people, the fans, the, the, you know, the fans who were programmers at least, uh, and everybody else chipped in. The fans who um, wanted to still play elite type games wrote these themselves and they're still going today. These two in particular, Elite and Pioneer, today are still going strong, right? Uh, which I think is very, very cool. And it shows how important the games were to, you know, a certain generation of people. Um, the games are still being played. Um, and, you know, they, they look pretty good, really. I mean, they're not at the same quality level as Elite Dangerous, but uh, I've forgotten how to switch the, <laughs> switch the ships. I'm not quite sure what I'm missing about yeah, I'm, that again. Uh, I'm missing something with the engines there. I'm not quite sure what I'm missing, but I think you're supposed to. See, that one works. At least I think it's working. What's the set control? I'm not sure why the set. Oh, that's the guns, isn't it? Oh, of the guns, Drew. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, there we go. Um, but those those games are particularly significant um, for for many of us because they kept the torch, right? They kept the torch of Elite burning um, until such time as Elite Dangerous suddenly became a thing. And it was yeah, with great excitement in 2012 when the Kickstarter appeared that we all went, "Oh my God, it's going to be back!" Um, but you know, why so long, right? 1995 to 2012 is like it's like 17 years. <laughs> and these games existed in the gap um, in order to kind of give us something to do. Now, I was inspired by Olite to to write some stories in it. And I wrote some fan fiction for Olite, which you can still get today. If, if, if anybody's interested, if you go to Commander Ascorbius, Ascorbius website, Commander Ascorbius, there we go. If you go to his, that's his YouTube channel, but he's got a, there we go. Um, um, I was asked, I, I, I kind of kept them separate from my elite official network, but you can go, you can read there, there you go, Drew Wager's Elite Saga, so anybody who's interested in doing that, you can download these fan fiction novels that I wrote back in the day for Elite, which are kind of elite-like, right? Um, you can go and download those if you want to read them. There's a set of five, and they do link up with, kind of link up with Elite Dangerous. So if you like my um, elite books, then you can go back and read what happened before that. And I've tried to kind of connect it all up. Uh, these are all free, by the way. So, um, you know, they, you can just download them as PDFs. And, and they're, you know, they're like Elite. They were free. Creative Commons, no money's been charged. But the idea is to have a kind of continuous law between the original Elite game and um, the, um, you know, what became Elite Dangerous. So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of it was important stuff to us, right? All important stuff. <laughs> And then we finally get to Elite Dangerous, right? So let me just let me just fire it up because this is this is this is important. Uh, this shows you everything you've seen so far and shows how it connects up, right? 
Uh, if you if you don't know some of the connections, it's important to see it. So we'll fire up Elite very briefly for a moment. Uh, I'm not going to do too much in there, but to, to to sort of show you where things have come from and where they're going to. Um, this is this is this is why I'm very excited by partly by doing the law tour, right? But partly just excited in general because I love the interconnectedness of all this stuff. The the beautiful thing about Elite and Elite Dangerous is it has a continuity of story which goes all the way back to 1984 again okay? and some of you on the stream will be going i wasn't even born back in 1984 in fact you probably some of you weren't even born in 1990 right <laughs> but i was a teenage boy in 1984 i was 13 years old i was born in 1970 and the to me as a teenager at the age of 13 right um this game the original elite captured my imagination and has been with me ever since right and I've always followed the law of elite right from day one all the way up until now and I, I will continue following it until I snuff it because um, it's one of those things right but um, you know the hardly any other game that I can think of has such a massive wealth of um, story and law and history and heritage associated with it you know we talk about heritage in terms of cars right you know Porsche or Audi or BMW all go back to God knows there. But for a computer game, right? How many computer games have heritage that stretch back that far? Not very many. There are some. And Elite is one of the most obvious ones of it. Um, and that, to me, is worth celebrating, right? Uh, either because it's just fun, um, but the fact that there is stuff in Elite Dangerous today which is based upon the original game, to me, is very, very significant. And in the law tour that I'm going to be doing in uh, whenever it is, 2nd of April, I think I start, and we're going to explore in detail what those connections are, why they're there, why they're important, okay? Uh, and kind of go through all that kind of stuff. That's what it's going to all be about. So let me just show you, just give you a taster of the sort of things I'm talking about. Because here in the galaxy map, and you'll notice the galaxy map, right? Okay, so if we zoom out, we, surprise, surprise, get a map of the galaxy, right? Okay. And that's exactly what we had in Frontier Elite 2 and Frontier First Encounters, a map of the galaxy on one of the options. If we zoom in, we have a 3D representation of the star systems, okay? Exactly like we had in Frontier Elite 2 and Frontier First Encounters, okay? And we can move around and do more sophisticated things now. But it's essentially exactly the same mechanism as we had before. But check this out, okay? And some of you will know this. Lave is the system that was in the original Elite. And if I move the map around like that, notice what we've got here. We've got Lave, Diso, Listi, Zeance, and Tianisla, and Riot, Orere, Uzar, and O... Uh, I don't know how you pronounce that, but Orev, okay? And Quator, okay? All right, hang on a moment. I'm just gonna fire up BBM. No, beep. Off. Right, okay, you can still see that. Right, lave, reorp, blah, 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 etc. Yep. Uh, let's switch that to, it seems to prefer the BBC Model B Plus for some reason. Run the disk. Okay, so I'm running this here. This, is, this may have not been done before, right? The original Elite alongside Elite Dangerous. <laughs> um, will this work? Yes, it's working. Right, okay, so here we go. All right, let's not load a new commander. Okay. Check the uh, check out the map here. Okay, so I'm going to go. There we go. All right. Okay, we have Lave, Diso, Listi, Lave, Diso, Listi, Zeons and Tianisla, Zeons and Tianisla, Orere, which is over there, Uza, which is there, Ridquat, which is there, very important, and down here, which we can't see on this map because it's slightly off the screen, but I think we can get to it if we go there. Yeah, that's the long range map. So if I press that one should be a rescue, which isn't actually on that one. Uh, interesting enough. That's on rear there. And then it then it changes, okay? So they're not the same at that point. So a small collection of systems there, um, as you can see, are represented exactly in Elite Dangerous. Now there are some slight oddities, okay? There are some slight oddities about this, and I'm gonna show you one. Because I happened, and I don't know if this is a coincidence or not, right? 
um, or it's just one of those weird things. But I um, noticed that right up here, it's going to take me a little while, bear with me, a little while to get there, because <laughs> this isn't the most sophisticated UI. Um, and they're all on the same plane, yeah, so they're exactly represented in, um, in Elite as they are. But there's a system up here, um, which I, I found out the other day. Uh, and if I click on it, I think it's that one. There's no, uh, that's one of these, maybe it's over here. Tianbei, there we go. Right, it's a miles, this is a system that is miles and miles away in the original game to the, um, to the core worlds here, as we call them, Lave. Uh, actually, the old world, should I say. Um, there, Tianbei, right? I was very surprised to discover It exists in Elite Dangerous. <laughs> so there's there's lots of little things like that. Okay. Now why would you do that? Okay. Why would you do that? I don't know. Well, I'm intending to investigate some of these little anomalies, right? Um, so there are little secrets, little bits of lore, little things dropped into Elite Dangerous from the original games, which are not immediately obvious. Um, okay, not immediately obvious until you go, oh, I'm just going to check stuff out. Okay, so yeah, so there's a, there's a little tidbit, right? Okay, that's the sort of stuff, um, as well as the law and the story and the narrative and everything else that goes around Elite that, you know, is important to me that I want to talk about in the law tour and the reason for doing it, right? Um, but to go and explore some of these little oddities that exist in the game see if there's anything to them they may not be right I mean they may just be there for a fun um, but that's an odd one I discovered that not long long ago um, and I thought that's weird <laughs> why is that there um, but I think it's cool right that those sort of ships are in the game and you know if we go to um, uh, where is it starport services isn't it um, I'm currently sitting there in my Imperial clipper no yes no Imperial courier um, is there a um, is there a there's a Cobra Mark III okay so I don't want to buy it but stored ships there's a, there's my Cobra Mark III um, let's just go and have a quick look at it use this ship yes I can do that I'm in the same system which is cool come on what I particularly like about this uh, Mad J Wegers is basically my home station, by the way, in case you're wondering, <laughs> where, where's that? Um, that was one of my Kickstarter naming privileges. I got to name a space station. Uh, so Mad J Wegers is, is kind of my home base. Um, so I've got my own Coriolis space station now, which is which is, it's, which is quite cool, let's be fair. Um, uh, it's an anagram, by the way. Mad J is um, Mark, Anita, Drew and Josh, which is my family's initial. <laughs> That's the best we could come up with. Um, so Mad J Wager is, 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 our, our, is our pseudonym for the future. Um, but if we look at the outfit, there's the Cobra, right? Okay, and we've got the triangular sides and the guns come out the front and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, if I go around the back, which I think is toggle there. Oh, I might have to do it this way. There we go. Look, so there's the, there's the back view and you've got the outrigger engines here. Uh, little triangular corners, you've got the main engines there, and they have, if you go back to the original game, um, which I can't get to work now, oh, let's just redo it, run disk again. So again, the original game, just get to load up for a moment, from 1984. Uh, the thing that I love about this is, look, there's the Cobra, right? There's the basic design of the Cobra with its triangular panels. It's two engines. It's two little outrigger stabilizer engines. They're still there in the Elite Dangerous design, right? Um, so they, you know, Frontier did do a really good job of r realizing the original wireframe ships in, um, in, in, the Elite, in the Elite Dangerous as well. So... I think I think it's pretty cool, and that really is. I know that was a bit of a bit of a whistle stop tour, right? Um, but that you know we we've, we've come all the way from this to here, um, and kind of everything in between. And so we've got a potted history from '84, the original Elite games, 
the various different ports of the original Elite games into the 16-bit area with the two the two um, official Frontier games. And then the silence, okay? Nothing official happens, and then the fans take over for a bit. And then, you know, obviously Elite Dangerous comes back, but the fan community is still out, out there. And what's beautiful about partly the Kickstarter and partly those original fan games that happened in the noughties um, is that the elite community, the wider elite community of people who just love this game, either because they're new fans or they're old fans, are the people who kind of make this whole thing happen. So you'll, if you come along to any of the elite community meets or LaveCon or FantasticCon or um, any of the other places, you know, the Frontier Expo, if they do another one, all those sort of things, they are worth coming along to just to meet other people who will tell you stories about the good times and all the, all the cool technology and stuff that's, that's been going along. But it's lovely to still see elite going from strength to strength in this kind of areas and to keep that story going. I was very lucky to write two of the official novels. That was great fun. I'd love to write another one, but can't do that at the moment. Um, but the game is still there, right? The new era is coming. We've got lots more things to do. So I think you know, we've got plenty to look forward to. So there we go. Fantastic stuff. Now, um, I'm going to shut down for now. I hope you've enjoyed your last couple of two hours. If you are interested in following the Law Tour, I'm kicking off... Um, on the 2nd of April. So it will be this stream, this time, this place, this channel, this, you know, um, same conditions. What I intend to be doing is talking on the stream, but also flying around in game, right? Um, and investigating a few places and leading you on a, a bit of a tour around the various different systems. Now, I know a lot of the law really, really well, and I'm going to to do a little bit more interaction and do a bit more study as well I'll make sure I know everything right? and hopefully answer as many questions as I can um, because I've been I've been involved in Elite since 1984 right I played it right at the beginning I've followed it all the way through I'm a huge huge fan as you as you all know um, and um, you know I've got a hope I've, I've probably forgotten more than I currently know at the moment but I will go and dig it all out right uh, and make sure I learn it up and the idea being that we've got 12 weeks to kind of tour around Elite Dangerous going seeing the places in the law and talking about why they're significant what happened and all the background we're going to start off we're going to kind of do it in chronological timeline order so we're going to try and do it from the beginning and then jump out to the other games as and when we need to, because there's lots of little bits of law in the other games which are still relevant. And we're going to use those games as you saw today. I wanted to make sure they worked. I thought it's a good idea for tonight's stream is to kind of play with the original games and make sure I can get them to work on my PC, which we pretty much managed to do other than dying a lot and going to Leasty and getting killed. Um, so um, <laughs> so you know, I wanted to use them. I want to use those as part of the, the law tour as well. So we'll have little diversions where we, um, we, we go and have a look at those things. But the idea is you can jump into the game if you want to, and you can fly around with us and go to the places, right? Um, and I'm hoping to chuck in a few bits, you know, a few teaser bits of information about stuff you may not have come across before. Maybe we'll do a little bit of um, narrative as well. You know, so I, being a writer, that's what I do as a job. Um, I'm hoping to be able to chuck you in the odd little bit of story as well, which will be sort of kind of an unofficial capacity, really. But, you know, I like to think stories in the universe, so we'll, we'll see what we can come up with. But that's kicking off on the 2nd of um, April. Now, if you want to join that and you want to join it in game, can I strongly suggest you get your Soul Permit, your Akinar Permit and your Alioth Permit? The Soul Permit is pretty easy to do. You only need to get a couple of ranks with the Federation. I think you get it. The Akinar one, you need to do a bit more work. Um, I think it's like about three ranks or something. Slightly harder to get. The Alioth one is a bit of a pain, to be honest. Um, I, it took me a couple of weeks to get it, but I've not been playing all that long. Um, uh, you have to get friendly with the Alioth Independence faction, which has around Alioth and some of the star systems you'll find them. You have to run missions for them. Some of their missions are a bit convoluted, um, but you can get there eventually. Um, so um, it'll be worth if you can getting those three permits because obviously without those permits you can't get into those systems uh, which is a bit irritating but it's one of those things that's the way the game works so if you can get those three permits in advance that will do you a lot of good and then you can follow us into those systems but we you don't need to have them maybe somebody will help you multi-crew in if you want to um, um, if you can do that um, what chip do you need to bring doesn't matter um, come with something average because um, some of you may want to play an open which means you could get shot at um, there's always PV you could get shot at as well um, some for something cheap that you don't really care about the rebuy I'm probably going to fly around in a Cobra because it's nostalgia right um, so this Cobra here is my original Kickstarter ship and I've kind of got it out of mothballs and got it working again um, in order to um, just use that as the law tour ship. So look out for my Cobra because it's a Cobra, right? <laughs> um, 
and maybe bring an SRV so we may want to land on some of the planets and go and have a look for other stuff as well I'm not sure at the moment um, there will be some special guests I'm organizing um, some special guests some of the writers some of the significant people in the uh, community as well to pop in and say a few things about certain things about elite um, and uh, you know that's going to be some fun as well so there's going to be it's 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 going to be light-hearted it's going to be fun it's going to be jumping and make the most of it it's not uh, stuff what I am hoping to do on some of the Saturdays in between um, in between the Thursday kind of streams is maybe set a few challenges and maybe we'll have some in-game events um, see uh, see what we can do so um, I'm not planning to get killed by Harry Potter <laughs> I probably won't be in open mode okay because um, <laughs> as you know I'm not the best PvP in the world I get, I'm, too, I'm getting too old for that sort of thing but um, basically um, you know fly in whichever mode you're happy with okay the, the, the itinerary will be up um, if you want to take your chances in open mode and deal with the consequences, that's absolutely fine, right? Um, I will probably be even in a private group or a solo group. I'm not sure yet, see how it works. Because I kind of got to be around and stay alive, right? <laughs> Try to take you to different places. So we'll see how it goes. But um, it'll be happening mostly on the stream, right? Okay, so you'll be able to listen in. You'll be able to play the game on the... If you've got a twin monitor set up like I have, you can have the game on one, you can watch the stream on the other, and then you can just follow around using that. And I'll just be talking rather like I have tonight, okay? Uh, talking about the law, talking about the story, talking about the background, talking about how things came along and the, the reason certain things are the way they are really dangerous. And you know, you'll be able to chuck questions. I haven't been able to look at the chat that much this evening, so apologies for that. If you have chuck questions in, I've I've missed them or ignored them um, uh, because I've kind of been concentrating a bit much trying to keep everything working. But I will I will endeavour on the on the law tour to. Um, answer as many questions as I can so um, hope that is exciting for you um, I thought it'd be something fun to do while we're kind of in this kind of bit of a lull while we're waiting for the the new era or whatever it's going to be um, and uh, so we'll see what uh, see what transpires there but uh, that's basically what the law tour is going to be about I do stream on Thursdays quite regularly um, quite often with an elite dangerous content um, but I, I do like and play some other games but um, from April the 2nd for 12 weeks it will be exclusively the Elite Dangerous Law Tour, so that's what the Thursdays will be. So tune in, hope you enjoy that. That gives you a taste of the sort of way I do things and what we're going to do. Um, I do like to give the law, I think I spoke about it last week, a little bit of reverence and respect, okay? So I, it's, it's important to me. I like to treat it with, with um, uh, you know, with not quite kid gloves, but, you know, do it, do it justice and do it properly. So hence the reason I'm quite excited about talking about it. So if that floats your boat, if you want to know more about the law of Elite Dangerous and some of the background to the, the way things are, then tune in. Thursdays at 8 p.m. UTC GMT, and um, we um, uh, we will have some fun. We will dive into the history of Elite and go back in time and talk about the Alliance and talk about the Empire and talk about the Federation. Talk about Galcop, okay? The demise of Galcop. What happened there, okay? Talk about some of the big personalities in Elite, the Turners, um, you know, and um, you know the Alioff thing. Why, why did the Alliance come into existence? All that kind of good stuff, right? So there's all sorts of stuff like that that we need to kind of go in. And we, you know, we'll even cover off the whole um, Salome story as well, for those of you who don't know what happened, which I'm sure most of you do. But um, yeah, we'll cover off what was going on and a little bit about the books and various other things. So some of the writers that wrote some of the official books will be coming on as well. So um, various special guests to come. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fun. So if that's uh, something you're looking forward to, then join me on the Thursdays and we'll, we'll go from there. So anyway, my friends, thank you very much for your company um, for this evening. Hope you enjoyed that rather whistle-stop tour of all the all the elite games that I could get. Oh, there are plenty more as well, by the way. Um, that's um, that's just the main one. <laughs> There's lots of others. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed that. It's been good fun um, uh, to, to host this one. So thank you very much for your company. And you guys, take it easy. Um, 07 and um, right on commanders <laughs> have a great time and I will hopefully see you all soon be good now, take care